and Steve here in the kitchen because the garage is a mess. I'll give you a quick overview of some tips on loading. First thing is uh, people try and practice loading. Loading is quite a complicated technique and it's, it's not one technique, it's a combination of lots of different things and I break it down when I teach it into different stages. So we start with what I call the dismount. See so from here, you dismount the gun, and that's the dismount. So the gun's coming out of the shoulder, coming down here, and your weak hand comes to the grab. And we'll come back to that in a minute. Second part is the grab, then what I call the locate. Grab, locate, slide one, slide two, and then the remount. Um, <coughs> and the best way to do it is to, to learn it in stages. And the easiest stages to learn are the dismount and the remount. Um, and forget about the load completely. You get the dismount and the remount done, you get them drilled into your subconscious. Uh, and then you don't have to think about them. Then you can move on to doing the more fiddly parts of actually loading the shotgun. Um, before we start talking about either of them, let's talk about the kit. My caddies are always set up so that my hand comes down to the middle of my body, to my belly button, and then start grabbing. And the way you set yours up it depends on your body. So I know that when I'm up here and I bring my hand down, that's where it comes to. It comes to the first caddies. If the first caddies, if the first shells are gone, it comes across and it comes across. So I always load in the same way, down, across, okay, down and across. That's why the King style or the Easy Load style is it's very clever because you don't have to look for where they are. You don't have to look for an individual caddy. You just come down and you come across. It means you can do it when you're running around, you can do it without looking um, and it frees you up from having to wonder where the next lot's going to come from. So let's start with the dismount. So, <coughs> we're up. We're shooting the right targets. All right. You have to push the gun away from you. It has to clear the shoulder here. It has to clear the, the fabric. Okay. And then you let gravity take it down. As gravity takes it down, your strong hand will twist the gun round. Your weak hand comes off. It's hard to do so. And it comes under your armpit. And the most important thing is that most of the weight is taken here. All right, you don't have to hold it. If you have to hold the gun, you, you, you quickly tire and the gun will start to flop around. So you're here, out and down. As this one's coming down, this hand naturally falls down. So you get this movement. Once you're here, you might as well practice the remount. Okay, the remount, you would have been here with your last slide and you bring the gun back up. And you can actually do it pretty much one-handed. You can't do the, the dismount one-handed because you have to come off here where you're supporting it with your shoulder and then drop it. So you practice these two moves until you get it. And what I, I quickly found is that as I got better and as I saw my friends get better and they got faster at loading, it was apparent in videos that the gun was very stable. So you... You dismount the gun, start with, your gun's kind of going a bit like this, and then you're trying to bring it over and you're trying to find it. And you find the best shoot is the gun comes down and it's rock solid. All right, some people will bring it across slightly closer to the caddies. I tend to have it facing forward when I'm practicing. Right. You also find if you put a dot on the wall, put the smallest target possible on the wall, and you start aiming at that, you come down and you come it back up. Because the whole thing is about shooting targets, it's not about loading the gun. Okay, so if you come up and you're all over the place and you haven't got a sight picture, there's no point doing it. So use that as practice. You find your first shots will get much faster. So yeah, we've done that. Dismount and the mount. Next thing is the grab. Okay, you both I think load four already. You need to get your fingers underneath, your thumb on top, and you take it out. And the most important finger is the ring finger. I'm not sure if you can see it at this distance, but the ring finger. 
ring finger controls this shell here. And this is the shell that everybody drops. This is the shell that when you come across and you find the gun and you do the locate, this is the one that gets knocked out. Or if your finger's not on it, that's the one that will drop away. And that's the one that you've got to um, really think about in the beginning. And it's the ring finger that does that. So we're here, gun's held here. All right, we've taken our grab. Make sure you take them out cleanly. If they all crimp up in your hand here, sort it out before you go across. There's no point going across with them all over the place. And then we do what I call locate. So you look in here, locate the first one. I actually do it, I can do it without looking. My hand comes across and I feel my hand on the gun. Push them in. And then make sure that you curl your fingers back as far as you can to clear the gun. And you slide in. Now a lot of people, to start with, poke the thumb in. And what I, I try to teach people is you need to have your elbow and your wrist leading and your thumb trailing along behind. Otherwise, if you're pushing in like this, not only is it weaker and it's slower, but you'll trap your thumb. So you have what I call a trailing thumb. You also find sometimes that if you bring your hand over the top, it facilitates that. Okay, You can't poke your thumb in if your hand is over the top and your elbow is leading. So we have the first slide, come back to the second slide. As you slide it in, you bring the thumb up. Now, when you unload the gun, if you can, take it out through the loading port. If you run the, the rounds through the chamber all the time, you'll find that the drill rounds um, don't last very long. They start to deform, start to get stuck on different things. Yeah. Try not to drop them on the floor when everybody's asleep. If you've got a Nordic tube on any of your guns, take the end off, take the spring out, and then you can do a drill where don't bother about doing the dismount or the remount, but just have the gun here and you put the cartridges through and you practice this motion here and have a bucket at the end of the tube, everything will fall out, and the next one, and the next one, and do your whole belt. And if you can hold 40 shells on your belt, do 40 shells. And just practice that and make sure you get that movement right. Get the grab right, get the rotate right, and you get the two sides right. And then go on to the next one. And the next one. And obviously if you didn't have the end on the tube and no spring in here, everything falls out on the floor. Put the gun down, reload the belt. It's the quickest way of getting the repetitions. Um, you don't have the resistance of the spring. And some people don't like to teach that way. But I think it's important to get the hand action. If you get the hand action... The grab, the hand action, grab, and the hand action. And you get that set in your head, put the tube back in, the first couple are going to feel awkward because they're under tension. Um, but you'll have the memory of, of how the hand works, how the arm works, and it helped me advance very, very quickly. Um, so there's that. Um, then you can move on to slightly more advanced drills. where we do um, load into the open chamber or the match saver drills. And because watching me load my belt is boring, I probably won't actually load the gun, but just show you the different drills that you can do. Generally, practice low fours because low fours is what you use in a competition the most, um, and it's what you've got to be really slick at. The, there isn't much benefit to doing a, a load eight, other than people like to see the timing of the load eight to see if they're better than the mates. 
to do those pours. Um, you get a lot of practice then of the dismount and the mount um, and coming back up onto the target. And once you've done that quite well, you can start moving. So the basic movement is you start here on target, you measure out three paces and you bang three paces. Now if you're right-handed and you're moving this way, it's moving with the gun. If you're right-handed and you're moving to the left, it's against the gun and it's harder. So we're here, bang, 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 and we're loading, nice and easy, and we come back up. If we have to go the other way, it's harder, because we either have to sidestep, or you have to twist out, puts the gun further away from the caddies. Um, if it's a short distance, normally it's kind of like a, a backwards walk, you put it in. Um, and then you can try also going forwards and going backwards and speed them up. With other drills, we obviously got the open chamber here, so you can practice um, running dry and putting your match saver in. So you're going to bang, bang and bring it in, press the button. I won't do that today. Do that. The other thing to practice is you run dry on a stage. What do you do? So with this gun, I come down and I bring the gun down, but I twist it even further over. Okay, so instead of normal, it's here, I feel the gun go dry, twist it over even more. That shell that we talked about earlier being controlled by your ring finger, okay, that one gets dropped in, push the button, roll your hand over, one, and then two, and we're away. So you need to be able to do all of that. Um, it's pretty much the quickest way with low four to do that, is to drop the fourth shell in and then slide the other three. What else, what else, what else? Okay, the other thing to work on, um, if you've got a 13 capacity gun, is what we call preload. So here at start, maybe the first shooting position is two meters to our left. And we're here, buzzer goes off. We can't shoot until we've gone two meters. So we're gonna come over and we're gonna put the rounds in and off we go. So there's 13 in the gun. That's uh, the preload, obviously if you're here. Um, you see some shooters put their finger on top. Josh Kenny will do that, put his finger on top, bring the gun over. I don't particularly like that myself. You have to see what's comfortable for yourself. I flip it over, preload, and then come up. You also need to be able to do that from the trail. So you stood there on the trail, kind of like this. Gun comes up, and you actually throw it. You have to do it quick, and you have to be slick with it. Um, never had an RO pick us up on it, but there is a potential that they could say you're out of control with the gun. Um, but if you watch sneezing or the others do it, okay. So it's like quick, and we're here. The other thing with loading is picking the gun off the table. So, not ideal here. You'd have the gun on the table or a tyre, um, option three start, and you have to decide what you're going to do. I would normally come down, take the match saver, drop it in, flip it over. Um, there are different variations on it. Some people will start in an empty chamber uh, and they'll just pick it up, load it, Sometimes push, pull the trigger and rack it. But I'd say to start with, put your match saver in, pick the gun up, turn it over, put eight rounds in it. Um, speed shoots like that are normally uh, eight round shoots, so you've got that ninth one just ready there for you. The other one is when you have a option two start. Um, possibly the quickest way to do that. If you're gonna pick it up, don't pick it up and then rack it, because what happens is the gun flops all around. If you're going to rack it when it's on something, watch the wires work right top. Put your strong hand on the gun, rack it, and then pick it up. Or one that I've been doing recently, is just pick the gun up, come up, finger over here, and rack it. So you bring it up. Uh, depends on your gun. Alright, this one's got a handle that lends itself to that. 
Um, you don't have to worry so much about fiddling with the gun. Just get it up, get it up there, whack it, and you're away. So that is pretty much everything. A lot of information there. Um, but the basics are split the load down into sections and learn the easy parts first. So learn the dismount, learn the remount, um, get them down pat. Then use the, what I call the, the no spring drill um, to practice taking the grab, the locate, slide one, slide two. Um, and, and just do that on its own. So then you're ready to put the, the spring back in and then start to put it all together. So you have your dismount, grab, locate, slide one, slide two, remount. Um, if you've got a 13 capacity gun, you do it three times, then you unload. Uh, try to get good at doing the unloads um, so as quick as possible so you get the repetitions and the turnover of the drill. What you'll find is if you get more repetitions into a shorter period of time, you'll advance quicker. Um, what I found in the early days is I was racking everything through the chamber into a bucket and having to pick everything out of the bucket um, and it just made everything slow. If you can get efficient at doing all the, the bits that you're not learning, like unloading and, and redoing the belt, you get more repetitions in a short period of time. And in, in a 15 minute session, you can do an awful lot, whereas you'll get somebody who's not as efficient and they won't do as much in half an hour. Um, and it's about hitting it hard and hitting it quick and intense and really thinking about it um, and then moving on. So that's the basics. The rest you need to be there in person. <laughs> Enjoy.